Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that, man? John Rambo. up your arm <laughs> yeah was perhaps the thing that most of us as little kids in my small town was afraid that we might ever have to deal with <laughs> kissing a girl uh, yeah, everybody kisses girls but can you sew up your own arm after right. falling off the mountain yeah that was like there, there are so many things in these movies that I think are are just life lessons for people because it's like oh well you, you one one of these days you might have to deal with this <laughs> <laughs> so you so you need to get your awesome survival knife and just keep it sharp and get ready because yeah rambo changed rambo changed a lot of things everything everything it, it changed the whole action movie genre i mean everything after that is a derivative of Rambo. Yeah, literally. It, it, uh, I think we talked about this before, how the Predator yeah. was, I don't think it was Rambo, but I think it was Rocky, Rocky in space, or yeah. Rambo in space. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was that was movie producers talking about how we're going to take Stallone's star power Yep. And this story further, which they did with Jason X, honestly, like, like <laughs> at some point, at some point, the Paramount people were like, ah, F it, right. <laughs> let's just do it. <laughs> but, but no, that's, that's where Predator came from. And that was John Claude Van Damme and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. That was Van Damme before. Yeah. Well, he got yeah. fired from it, but that was Van Damme before anybody knew who he was. So a little so- and, something to go with that since we're right here at this point. Also, a big influence on Predator was the movie Without Warning, which I covered on Rad Movie Rama. The same guy that played the Martian in that movie ended up playing the Predator in this movie. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's all intertwined because they said that that was a heavy influence on Predator, along with the concept of putting a mega, you know, action star in the middle of it. Mm hmm. A lot of times whenever we do these podcast fresh eyes, these go back and watch, whether whether we do it for the show or whether it's just because I've heard people talking about it on other podcasts, sometimes it doesn't measure up. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes the memory is better. Sometimes it's better to just leave it stuck in your head as 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 the impactful thing that it was. And then whenever you watch something, sometimes you see the strings, sometimes the acting's bad, like it's the monster's not as scary as you thought it was, or whatever. Um, I hadn't watched the Rambo movies in a long time, but for this episode, um, it was kind of funny because I've got DHS of, of uh, First Blood and First Blood Part 2. Yeah. And uh, I asked my wife, I was like, hey... I, you know, for the, for the show, I need to watch, you know, Rambo movies. And, um, I've got a VCR, I've got the VHS, put it in there and first blood wouldn't play. Ah. I could not, I could, I couldn't make it play. And you like, every time I put the VCR, like, remember this from the eighties, <laughs> you put the, you put the tape in and then the VCR just turns off. Yep. Yep. And it's like, well, I'm not exactly sure what that's about. <laughs> You expect to pull the tape out and have it all, blah, 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 mm-hmm. but it it comes out and everything's just fine and put it back in and shuts down. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. So I put it to the side, I put in part two and it immediately 
like hits the end and rewinds itself and then starts playing. <laughs> and it's got a little little wobble at the front. And yeah. It's like, dun dun. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I'm not watching First Blood, but I'm watching Rambo. Yeah. And I have to say, I, probably, I haven't watched either of these movies in like 20 years. Maybe. Like, I, it's been it's been a long time. Yeah. And it Rambo First Blood Part 2 was like a song that you knew really well, that you just haven't heard. Yeah. But whenever it starts playing, it just hits every note properly. Yeah. There, there, there is no, there's no like lost in time. It's, it, it is awesome. Yeah. R- Rambo, even if it's a canon film, which canon cut corners in a lot of yeah. different ways, and they've got a lot of crappy movies. Yeah. Rambo is amazing. Yeah. So then I watch Rambo. So then the next day, um, First Blood's available on Amazon. Yeah. To rent for like two ninety nine, so I bought that and was like, watch First Blood, and again I was just, it holds up. Yeah, I'm absolutely blown away. There's no, like, there, there's no weird special effects. We 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 talk about scary movies all the time. There's no weird special effects. Yeah, it's it's just effects, and they're they work. Right, and it's so good. Yeah, the 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 first the the Rambo movies. First Blood and First Blood Part Two deserve every accolade they've ever gotten yeah. and every dollar they've ever earned. They're awesome. Yeah. So that's my critique. What's yours? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, what, you know, the the first one. You you said it while I go. The sewing up the arm scene from the first movie. It was just one of those things where you you've never seen anything like this before in a flick. You're, I was, fifteen maybe when it came out, and. You know, the idea of, I think one of the big things about this too is the fact of our age group knows, knew so little about Vietnam, right? I mean, here, here's a a guy, a left behind from Vietnam with all those skeletons in the closet, just trying to find his way, right? Stumbles into a little town could be the town it was in Footloose, right? Because they didn't mm-hmm. like him because of his hair and he's a, you know, wearing the army jacket and he don't deserve to wear that jacket because it's his hair and you know, Dena, he is a great bad guy in that flick for sure. It really is. Yeah. Because it's it's believable. He's not like twisty mustache <laughs> kind of bad. He's your local big fish little pawn scenario. And the fact of that that John Rambo's just passing through, right? And that's why it's called First Blood, right? He drew First Blood. I'm ending this game. And there's such a realism about that one because it becomes a, a game of survival, right? To me, the second one is the ultimate action flick. To me, everything that happened after that is because that movie was so over the top where he, he goes back and saves POWs, Mm-hmm. I mean, that whole ball of wax of the second movie is the pinnacle of action flicks. There is no Invasion USA. There is no uh, Mission in Action films. There is no the Jean-Claude Van Damme series of movies without that second Rambo movie. Um, of course. But it's it's a full-fledged action flick. To me, the first one, you still get that grittiness of it not being... An action flick. It's almost like it's like the original Walking Tall, right? Mm-hmm. And it's gritty. It's nasty. Uh, you're dealing with locals that don't understand. You, get, you just have a character that's just like it, it's a real life character. It's a real yes. situation, right? Right. And that's that's one of those things that I noticed while watching it the other day. Is you know, like cinematography is just like a bunch of mountains and roads and kind of just wetness and just daily life yeah it's 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 not like i want to say like michael bay shooting like yeah. armageddon where it's yeah, like here's right. a here's a, an american flag in front of a coke machine you know like feel bad for the culture it's more like no this is just life right. this is just 
This is any town USA, and it, he just could have just walked across your yeah, town. Absolutely. And it was another. It was an, it was a thing about Brian Dennehy too, which is, um. I remember Dennehy's character just being so evil. Yeah. Yeah. He's not. He's, he's, he's really not. not. He, He's, he's, he's just not at all. Typical local guy trying to take care of his community. Things just go wrong, and he can't get out he, of it. He picked the wrong guy. He's a jerk. Yeah. He's a jerk, yep. but he's not evil. He's not evil. No. And this is one of those things, because I forgot about the part, and it's a, it's a pivotal part if you're paying attention. Like, he sees the hippie. Yeah, and he picks him up and drives him through town, and then drops him off on the other side of the bridge. And he's just like, "Okay, hit the road, roll on." Yeah. Rambo turns around and walks back towards town. Right. Like he he ran, and and not to say that he didn't have the right, not to say that anybody doesn't have the right to do. Like all he wanted was a hamburger, so he's just like, "Well, screw it, I'm hungry, I'm going back." But he's also ran. Rambo is a little bit to blame in this little scenario sure. because he's like, oh, you're a jerk? I'm going to push back on you a little bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and Den- Denny, he goes, goes sideways on him. Yeah. And, and, like, arrests him and whatever. But if you, if, you, if you take Rambo out of the situation and you make this movie about... The sheriff. You make it about Dennehy. He tries to give a hippie a ride through town. The hippie resists. He arrests him. He brings him home. The guy busts out of jail. Yeah. Blows blows up a bunch of crap and then kills his best friend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you can you can kind of <laughs> you can see both parts of it for sure. I mean, ran, 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 I mean, like ran, Rambo was completely justified in everything he right. did. But like whenever uh, David Caruso, <laughs> it's so great is David Caruso of uh, NYPD Blue, right? Uh, is that little young deputy, and he's like, "Oh, he's a Medal of Honor winner," and you try to give him crap, and then he's sitting there like over the body of his friend. Right. He's like, "We've been friends since we were in kindergarten." <laughs> like that, the, I think a lot because of the. Uh, the way that Rambo, the second movie, yeah, blew up. Yes, I think I think if uh, uh, First Blood had been a movie like the 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 Deer Hunter, yeah, where it was just left of its own, where you could identify with whatever character you wanted and see their own sort of situational tragedy, which I think honestly was the way it was written. I think that's the it, way it was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I think so. Uh... Yeah, I mean, we're right on the same page right here, I think, because it's a situation where nobody's really in the right. Both have kind of pushed the boundaries. You just picked the wrong guy that day, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're defending your little town. It's a small little, you know, I think about where I grew up. There's, It's a population of 2,000. You know, this could easily be a situation that would happen. He was being a nice guy by escorting him across town and getting him out of, you know, out of the bridge, you know, on the mm-hmm. other side, instead of letting him come in town and being even even bigger butthole to him, you know. Right. So that's his way of being nice. <laughs> and he just gets to this position where he just he he's so so deep in, and his friend's dead, and yeah, like. I can't get out can't, of it. Yeah. And Troutman shows up and he's like, well. <laughs> yeah. You don't know who you're messing with, do you? <laughs> well, and the thing is, like, I, th- I think that was a fear in the 80s, too, especially in 82. Like, my dad used to tell me a story about it. I don't know. It's one of those, like, seven degrees of stuff. But yeah. it was a story back in the day where some some vet came home and they didn't condition him correctly and he was sleeping with his wife and he started having a nightmare and she tried to wake him up and he woke up and like snapped her neck and then went back to sleep yeah woke up the next day and yeah and that's i think it's that thing because that's what was happening i mean these people were coming back 
look how badly they were treated when they came back from Vietnam. I mean, they came back to a country that was in turmoil that didn't want them back. They, they didn't, you know, support the war at all. They're trying to come back and fit into a society after they've been out in this terrible situation. And I don't think, like I said, my age group, we know so little about it because it was ending when I was close to being born, mm-hmm. you know. And then nobody talked about it from that point on till you started seeing some movies later on. So there was this huge gap there of, you know, I didn't know the history of everything that went on. And you hear these stories about exactly what you talked about, people that, you know, having uh, post-traumatic distress disorder and all these things because of it. And, you know, what do you do? These people feel like they're just totally lost. That's John Rambo. I mean, this guy is portraying that perfectly. And when it when it's time to do the deed, there's there's nobody any greater at it than he is. And have you seen have you seen that uh, original end scene? Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a hard scene to watch. Yeah, it is. It is. And that's the scene that was in the book. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a hard scene to watch because especially um, when when Troutman's trying to talk him down. And for those of you guys who haven't seen First Blood in a long time, and we're not talking about Red Dawn, it's 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 an extremely personal movie. If it, it if you can identify with a character, it's like, oh my god, I was sent over here to win a war. Yeah. And it was lost for me. Right. And and then all of my friends are dead. The ones who didn't get killed there have died at home. And I walk around getting hassled by cops all the time. So, like, my life sucks. Right. And at the end of First Blood, the book, and the original ending of the movie, is that basically Troutman has Rambo at gunpoint. Mm-hmm. And Rambo rushes him. And takes a bullet for takes him himself take out. Yep. Yeah, I mean, audiences it, did. Audiences uh, did not like that yeah. because yeah. they liked they liked Rambo. Right. They liked the yep. survival at any cost sort of thing. So the suicide by cop at the end, while it's probably the more realistic ending, was not the ending that right. anybody wanted to see for this character who was a Congressional Medal of Honor winner and a Silver Star and multiple Purple Hearts and just like... Yeah. Mo- like super badass. Yeah. Yeah. So they just sent him to jail and then dropped him back into Rambo 2, <laughs> which is the definitive movie yeah. of... I think... I, I mean... It's the definitive. These were so awesome. Definitive it's action so movie, definitive. man. It, it's Dude. it's it's got just the right amount of over the top that it's not ridiculous, right? It's hitting all those high notes. That freaking torture scene, man. I remember the first time seeing that, just sitting there and just squirming in my chair, man. Uh, yeah, man. Two, <laughs> two is hard to beat, man. It really mm-hmm. is. It. I mean. And again, that's one of those that because uh, UHF starts oh, off yeah. with with uh, Weird Al in the helicopter, like <laughs> destroying basically everything, just like, <laughs> like in a in a Rambo screen, just like machine gunning everything and his big guns and his yeah. muscles and just it was parodied, it all up. parodied in everything, man. It was such an iconic movie. Like I said, it set that new standard of what an action flick has to be. And I don't care what superstar you put in the movie, they were making another version of a Rambo-type flick. Chuck Norris made a living off of ripping off Rambo 2 mm-hmm. with the Mission, Mission in Action flicks, and, and <laughs> I mean, which are great. They're great, but it's no Rambo 2. Dude, how long I watched Rambo versus Mission in, Missing Action, <laughs> I was expecting... <laughs> In, in Rambo, whenever they like got the boat and they're like running away, and then the other boat attacked them, I was like, "Oh, here's that point at which Rambo busts up out the water with the uh, yeah. M60 and just like that." I'm like, "That was Chuck Norris." 
<laughs> Rambo's not going to do any flying sidekicks or anything in somebody's face either. So, oh, uh, but yeah, man, uh, to me that that really started the whole action flick flood that we got from that point on between him and Arnold. Man, I mean, it was <laughs> it seemed like every week a new action flick was coming out, and two is just. I don't. I don't know that there's a better action flick than than part two. I I, I agree. And you say, you know, yeah, well, you know, you have Arnold, but then you have between Stallone and Carl Weathers and Rocky, and then with Arnold and Carl Weathers and Predator. Yeah. And like like you had all of these huge dudes yeah. just being big and Stallone was always shorter than them, um, but always somehow just stature wise oh, was just, and, and I think like the, the great thing is like all through first blood, like even, even whenever he's completely out of his mind, he's soft spoken. Yeah. Yeah. He's just, he, you know, and, and, and to make, you know, like, I, I made fun of him a little earlier, but, uh, you know, Stallone, he's all just a little bit soft-spoken. He's got that. Yeah. But um, in the beginning of Rambo, where he's just, he's just a guy who's trying to survive. You know, he's got yeah. that, that look. Yeah. I don't remember Stallone being that great of an actor. I remember him being a badass and fun to watch. Yeah. But I don't remember him being that empathetic. But yeah. he's got that. He's got the look. It works. Yeah. And he's just, you know, the, the whole, like, even with the M60, like, <laughs> this, this is a point where I'm pretty much suicidal. I'm going to blow some stuff up. And I've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> like, just so, somebody shoot me or else. Yeah. I'm going to get my way. Like, yeah. it, it, here's where we are. It's a character thing. It's not. It's not. It's not over the top. Whenever it's just like I'm done. I'm out. Right. <laughs> I'm just gonna blow some. St- <laughs> but man, did you walk around with with a survival knife on your belt? Who did? Who didn't have a survival <laughs> knife? Right, with the compass on the on the end of the handle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, that was. I, I mean, if it <laughs> when it got to the point to where even the toy owls had just lines and lines of toy Rambo knives, <laughs> I mean, you know, you change from buying Western six shooters to buying a survival <laughs> knife for kids. You know, I mean, it, it was that drastic of a change. Um, yeah, my stepbrother. I mean, of course, he's a lot younger than me. And yeah, Rambo was was it, man. I mean, all of his toys. Um, like I said, it, it, part two just opened the floodgates, and and part three is kind of where I kind of checked out a little bit because it got a little far fetched for me. Uh, trying to outdo the second one, so hung in there pretty well till he actually had that hole blown through him and he just carterizes it and he's walking around with a big hole. <laughs> I kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I know you're a tough dude, but I don't think anybody's that tough. They can walk around and you can see daylight through them <laughs> yeah, right. and still be functioning. I mean, you know, something's going to be coming out of somewhere because you just messed up your intestines really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and- one of the earlier episodes, well, the first episode, we're like, Karate Kid. Let's talk about Karate Kid. And when, like, Cobra Kai was like, right. co- you know, part one, where there's Daniel and Mr. Miyagi, and part two, where there's, yeah. you know, Daniel and Mr. Miyagi in Okinawa. Yeah. And then there's part three, where it's the chick, and you're like, nope. no, nope. There was a part three right. that was not with, like, there was, there was a Daniel and Mr. Miyagi. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I do remember that. Except for, I don't really. Like once you pointed it out, I do remember it. <laughs> but but it's a distant memory, and I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it was not, I was like, ah, oh, this is not a record I want to play again. Like it's okay. <laughs> like I understand. <laughs> I, I I 
I see where you're going, but nah. <laughs> there, there just became a point at which Rambo, like you said, it just became like, like uh, Wolfenstein, where there's like, right, robot, robotic Hitler at this point. Oh, I'm a hit robotic Hitler. You're like, where did robotic Hitler come from? Right. It's like you're gonna put the the, the Titanic on skis or something. Like, come on, man. Yeah. You're like, you just you're, there's only so badass you can get. Right. <laughs> you just let it let it go. And that's what I mean. It's it was, just it was a, it was too over the top, and and again we got so saturated with action flicks that it just became another one of those at that point, right? I mean because it just it wouldn't do anything different besides just the the craziness of you know having the 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 warheads on the the arrows was kind of cool, right? I mean, but <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. It, it, I I lost interest at that point. And yeah, I didn't. Probably because there was a cartoon that was coming on. There was action figures. There was, I mean, it, it totally became, you know, a kid's thing. And usually when that happens, when you're a teenager and everything starts aiming at the kids, you kind of go, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm a little younger than you. Right. I, got, I got all of those Rambo toys for Christmas. Ah. Dude, all of them. I got the playset, like the uh, the Vietnam. Uh, it was like four sided watchtower, <laughs> and it was, it was a bamboo watchtower, and it was not very well made. Like it had these little clips. It's like you you, you laid them across each other, and you clip them, and then you had clip them, and then once you got them, and you set a guy, it would all come tumbling down. <laughs> you mean like a real one? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, it did, it did kind of suck. But man, the the Rambo figure, which was the best made, obviously, because they're yeah. like, well, we can't mess up this one. Rambo and Troutman, those two. Yeah. Dude, Rambo's scars. Like yeah. you feel his chest. They were, you know, and he had he had scars. He had the knife. Yeah. He had the whole the whole everything. Man, they they had this little playset. It was a rainbow playset, and it had a pistol. And of course, you're looking at me on video. Like the pistol, it's a 1911. It was a, <laughs> a 45 caliber pistol. It was like this big. And it, but but there was this little uh, plastic Buddha. Yeah, yeah. So if you if if you remember in the uh, in Rambo, First Blood Part Two. Yeah. His liaison. Her name was Cho. Yeah. Co, Cho, she she uh had a little bamboo necklace and he asked her about it and she said it brings me luck. What brings you luck? And he showed her his knife. <laughs> and then she ends up getting killed yep. after they kiss, and he takes off her necklace and puts it around his own neck to bring him luck. Right. Which is weird because it didn't bring her luck. <laughs> yes. If she's dead, <laughs> she's wearing the necklace. Yeah, I don't think that worked out very well. <laughs> yeah. But, we never said Rambo was the smartest guy. <laughs> dude, I had I wore this little jade plastic Buddha on my neck, and I had a red bandana. Oh, like, I was ten years old. Well, man. sure. I was like, yeah, I was, dude. I was king of the neighborhood. Yeah. I was like, ah, that was, Rambo. That was my little brother, man. Same way. I mean, that that's <laughs> tie the headband around him and, and and grab his little fake guns and go out in the yard and kill all the bad guys. You know. Oh, dude, killing bad guys was. We're going to take a break and we're going to play you a commercial. And we'll be back to talk about killing bad guys. <laughs> All right, let's talk about killing bad guys. <laughs> Rambo kills the hell out of some bad guys. Oh, yeah. In, uh,. Like, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I, I think in uh in in part two, uh, he's got fifty nine kills. <laughs> he 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 won't, no no not in part two like he didn't get fifty nine kills in part two. In part two, he got his congressional medal of honor, his silver star, all that other stuff. He's got. Like army ranger status, he's he's all of these. He's green beret, 
like all this stuff, and he's got 59 kills, which is a <laughs> huge amount of kills. Yeah. He he easily doubles that in in part two. <laughs> he easily yeah like so he he's easily at a hundred and twenty hundred and thirty kills in uh <laughs> at the end of part two yeah yeah I mean that's the thing we you know we always talk about the slasher flicks and all that stuff oh Jason gets you know twelve or thirteen in this episode yeah I did about a hundred and fifty in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked, I don't know, I, I, it's 1985, so Red Dawn came out in, what, 82? But he did, I think there was a little tribute to Red Dawn. Yeah. Because he's flying the helicopter, and he turns around, and he's, like, firing the, the machine guns back at the helicopter. And he did take out the, the side gunner. Yeah. The side gunner does get killed. Yeah. But the helicopter does not go down. He takes out the gunner. Yeah, and then turns around and runs away. <laughs> runs away, <laughs> <laughs> like just like in Red Dawn. If if he would have just aimed slightly to the left, he would have blown up the helicopter with that RPG. Yeah, but instead he just knocked that dude out the window. <laughs> it's like ah, but we we talked about Red Dawn before, but is that not one of those most disappointing things in the world? Is yeah. that you fire? You fired at the helicopter. Yeah. You hit it center mass. Yeah. You didn't take the, didn't take the it out. helicopter out. You just knocked a dude out. Like I've been killing yeah. dudes all day long. <laughs> like I, I, I could have just shot that guy. <laughs> I wasted my last RPG and knocked that guy out the back of the helicopter. <laughs> they did. The, they did that same thing in Rambo. Yeah. Like, yeah. He falls out the back like <laughs> still shooting. Yeah, keep on going. <laughs> keep on going. Oh. So did did you did you see the later ones? Did you see part four? Did you see part five? I haven't seen the very last one. I I didn't. Dude. I I rem- I did watch part three. Yeah. But I don't remember the like karate kid part three. If you tell yeah. me what happened, I'll be like, Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, well, um, three is is the the one that's oversaturated. Four is that that came back in early two thousands, and he's a lot older. And dude, that's about the bloodiest movie I've ever seen in my life. Really, it is insane, gory. Dude, he is. There's one scene in particular where he's got this. It's a big gun that's mounted on the back of this vehicle, and I mean he's taking off legs. People are running and their legs are coming off while they're running. <laughs> nice. I, I, I was just like, holy crap. I mean, you know, you always think about saving Private Ryan, you know, that the opening of that. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is like that. I mean, it's that kind of level of just stuff going on. It's pretty brutal, man. And I, I've heard that the last one is really good too, but I never got a chance to see it. I just. I mean, like we were talking about earlier, like awesome can be Mandalorian because it's new and yeah. we love it, but it 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 talks about stuff that I just I remember Rainbow Three, yeah, and being I mean I I think I enjoyed it. Like I don't have anything bad to say about it. Like it wasn't like it was like oh this sucks. Yeah. But I, I remember like being like, okay, well, I think I think this has jumped the shark at this point. Yes. Yep. That's exactly and, what happened to that one. And so then in like, oh, we got a new Rambo, Rambo Four. I'm like, eh, um, I was done then. Yeah. They're like, okay, well, Rambo Last Blood. I'm like, well, I remember that scene where Rambo was supposed to be killed by Troutman at the end of First Blood, and that, like, all the whole rest of this is a dream sequence. So I'm kind, I'm kind of, uh, I'm I, okay. I, I, I think you ought to check them out, man. At, at least check uh, out, at least check out the fourth one, because it it redeemed itself, man. I mean, I there was parts there I almost wanted to get up and cheer. I was like, that's freaking insane. It's so good. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll check out part four. And uh, I, I mean, I gotta go back, dude. I like I say, 
um, sometimes, and I, it's it's not really it, it it does happen with the horror movies sometimes. Whenever mm. we're doing stuff for scary dads, it's like, oh, have you seen this? And like, no, you go watch it and like, yeah. I remember this being scary, but it's not anymore. Right. Like, I remember this being fun. It's really not anymore. Like, so so you watch movies sometimes and, like, Smoking the Bandit, for example. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed watching it. But I'm also realizing that I'm that – I've got, like, three movies sewn together sure. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do I need to watch two, three, and four in order to to find all of the scenes that I remember? Right. Rambo was just perfect, straight on. Yeah. Like, there's no like, there's nothing I forget. Yeah. Like, I re I remember First Blood was in the mountains of Colorado. Absolutely. I remember Rambo was in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, the third and... one. The third one is more straight up fighting Russians, right? And it's more in mm -hmm. the in the. In Afghanistan. The, yeah, you know, and it, it's, I don't know, it's just it's just doing more of the same, but it's just more crazy over the top. Like I said, the the arrows with the, you know, RPGs on 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 the ends of the arrows, and you know, I don't know. It, it was, I think at that point we got so much Stallone that you're just kind of kind of tuned out on that as well because between. Him still cranking out the Rocky movies, and you're starting to get Cobra, and you're starting to get all these other mm -hmm. flicks right here at the same time, and then all the Arnold flicks, all the you know you're you're going through Predator and Raw Deal and all these other <laughs> you know Schwarzenegger flicks, and you start sneaking around the corner with some Seagull stuff coming in. <laughs> I, I, we just we got oversaturated, man. Oh, don't forget Commando in there, man. <laughs> Army, 6th June, 69. Accepted special forces. <laughs> Helicopter and language qualified. <laughs> Expert in light weapons and guerrilla warfare. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone is back as Rambo. Rambo's the best combat vet I've ever seen. His mission, to locate American POWs in Vietnam. Think you'll find someone? POWs? Doubtful. Come on, move it, move it! His orders, not to engage the enemy. Ah! He's got 36 hours to complete the mission and reach the extraction point. We're going down! You're not going anywhere. I'm telling you to abort. Double-crossed and left behind enemy lines. You're the one who's making the mistake. Yeah, what mistake? Rambo. And now, he's getting out any way he can. Rambo. What most people call hell, he calls home. No man, no law, no war can stop him. Sylvester Stallone is back. As Rambo. First Blood, Part Two. I think things are good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, back to the survival knives, man. Yeah. You said you carried one. I carried one. Did you carry one to school? Did you carry? Were you allowed no, to do that? No, I didn't that? take it to school. No. Um. I actually was able to. Wow. <laughs> it was a weird, like '80s. 80s before everybody went and got the pennies in a wad and 
Right. Moms and dads yelled at everything and like helicopter parents and the internet and ah, Karen's. Yeah. No. I, <laughs> we, we had a uh, Halloween, like dress in your costume day. So I had my camouflage pants and I put on a belt and I'm doing my survival knife. And it was like you say, you, know, you had to have the compass in the bottom right. and you unscrew it, and it had some fishing hooks and a couple needles, and fishing yeah. line, and well, <laughs> like a, in a situation a like that, yeah, you could you could probably take it for something like that, but you couldn't just take it every day and say, "Hey, <laughs> look at yeah, my well, knife." No, that's what I mean, dude. If you, if, dude, if, if, if I think if my children knew how to spell knife, somebody <laughs> would call the ATF at this point. Like, <laughs> Dude, we had Gangster Day during Homecoming Week. We had Gangster Day where you dressed up like the mob. You came in with fake machine guns, baseball bats with nails sticking out of them. I mean, you know. See, normally I like to say, like, children are stupid. But really, it's the adults that are stupid because... (laughs) Why would they allow that? But at the same time, like... Well, it, it's it's that thing of there's a difference between being educated and having common sense. Yeah, and that's, there's a lot of that. Sadly, that's we're lacking more of the common sense part of it. And I don't know about you, but life will get you. You know, you'll get a lot further in life with some common sense versus, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not knocking an education, but I'm just saying. Again, look at John Rambo. <laughs> you know. A lot of what he learned was because of a lot of common sense and and the tactical skills that he had, right? It wasn't because he was super educated. So yeah, well, uh, education is supposed to be a knife sharpener, right? right. It's not supposed to be the, the knife. knife, right? <laughs> okay, well, dude, like when I was a kid, I, I had the survival knife. I, I'll describe it right now, man. It was it was the coolest thing in the world. The thing was, of course, I was smaller then, but like eight or ten inch long blade, like curved up just like out of Rambo. Yeah. And on the back side, it had the the the, the fish scaler. Yeah. Is the what teeth. they called it. Yeah. But um, which I tried to scale a fish with it because I used to fish a lot back then, and that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like, and. In that one scene of Rambo where, where he's got the uh, survival knife and he's like cutting barbed wire with yeah. his yeah. – the, the, he didn't have a bottle opener, a proper bottle opener on his knife, but they the, my knife had a bottle opener on it. <laughs> Dude, you, 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 you can't cut uh, barbed wire yeah. with a little – Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Even if you knew how to do it, it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> it doesn't. It does not scale a fish. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, I would figure the actual knife part would actually scale the fish, but that's just me. Cause... <laughs> well, dude, they call it the fish scaler. Yeah. On the... Yeah. Like, well, if you buy a microwave oven. And you have it sitting in the corner, and they're like, "Well, this this actually does the the best sort of microwaving." You're gonna look <laughs> over at your oven and be like, "Well, why do I have that? If I <laughs> if I got this, like your fish scaler, you're like, well, it sure. I don't I don't understand why a serrated back of a of a blade. Anyway, I carried this thing around everywhere. Sure, I carried I carried around all the time. I had the compass." Yeah, and I had all the crap that was stuffed into. It even had a little sharpener on the front, like a little sharpening stone on the front of the scabbard. Yeah, so you stick your knife in there, <laughs> dude. I'm probably really lucky that I didn't stab myself in the leg so many times because <laughs> of the uh, uh, Rambo, like, doo, 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 doo. right? And he like like pulls his uh, uh, the head headband on. He's like, whew. <laughs> tightens, tightens his headband and like t- puts the necklace on it's like, <laughs> and like pops up like it doesn't hang as a necklace oh no it it's, up, like, it's it's like a choker 
and then he gets his knife and he sticks it in the scabbard like Hoop. yeah <laughs> i'm so glad i didn't ever stab myself in the leg because man i reenacted those scenes Plenty of time. Well, again, man. Whenever, those, anything would get loose. I'd those like, those montages, man. That's that's those things that stay in your head. Commando's got the same thing, right? Where he's putting on the makeup, <laughs> right? You're going, oh yeah, about to get Somebody good. About to get. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get told. <laughs> yeah, and he does the same thing. He's strapping on the the grenades, and he's putting his knife in the sheath and the makeup. I mean, so it's the, those montages, man. That's. That's action 101, right? You got to have <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Because, man, I go camp. I go hunt. I go do whatever. It's like I've never taken – I have never, like, like whether I was mad or not. Because I've been – I have been mad. I have been angry putting a knife into a sheath. I have been both of those things at the same time. Yeah. I've never taken that knife and been like, shoot. <laughs> and try, to, try, try to stab through the sheath and just been like eh, well i'm angry so i'm gonna put the knife in the sheath and throw it in the, in the bag and just, i'm still mad <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i mean just again the 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 impact of that um the cartoons, the, 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 the toys. The, the big knives, you know, because you can't talk about big knives and not talk about Crocodile Dundee, too, right? I mean, because <laughs> right. same scenario, right? The the big buoy knife, basically, is what it was. And it, it's just wild how that was kind of the fascination of the time. But, I mean, he, he is, Rambo is an 80s icon. I mean, you can say Sylvester Stallone is, but Rambo, in general is an 80s icon, mm-hmm. one of the biggest. Uh, just about any movie you see from that time period. You know, we I recently was on a, another podcast where they were doing a trick-or-treat. We were doing a commentary, and there's a scene where the mom is about to go out with this guy, where the guy shows up, and he's dressed like Rambo. You know, that's that just shows you the impact of the time. She was dressed like either Madonna or a Valley Girl, and he was dressed up as... Is Rambo, and it, again goes hand in hand with that time period, man. It was it was everywhere, dude. My whole life was GI Joe, yeah, Rambo. Like honestly, it's weird because the 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 whole Vietnam, the the whole Vietnam vets, the whole uh, not being interested in war. War yeah. is bad, yeah. Right, like you, except for. All of my toys yeah. were yeah. <laughs> war is awesome. Yes, <laughs> Fight, fighting is awesome. War is awesome. Well, because in the yeah. back of our heads, you know, there was the threat of the nuclear attack, which is way scarier. So it really downplayed mm-hmm. military type war, you know, hand to hand type stuff. So, I mean. But it's it's always been that way. I mean, kids in the fifties and sixties had the little army men, and I mean that's just uh, of course. It's just it's 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 the same thing. Um, you know, it, it's teaching you to kind of prepare for the worst things that can happen in life. <laughs> you know, it's a strange way to look at it, but that's what we do. That's what horror movies is. Horror movies is to prep us for dealing with the really bad stuff that's going to happen to us in our life and make us go, "I can handle this," because. <laughs> You know, I've seen worse things in these flicks. Oh, totally agree. It's just one of those, like, well, the world's about to end, yep. so. Yep. Hey, Rocky, you got any more of those uh, AK-47s lying around? Because <laughs> I could probably use one later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's really just the mindset of where we were. I mean, guys are always going to be attracted to. A form of violence, even if we don't see it as violence, such as Ninja Turtles, you know, whatever you want to call it, Transformers. It's still the same thing, right? It's good versus evil, and you want to be as prepared as possible. If that wasn't true, we wouldn't have decades and decades of kids being in the Boy Scouts, right? I mean, you would almost want to be a Boy Scout after watching Rambo because you want to be able to go out and fend for yourself. I was and did. Yeah. I'm one of those guys. 
Yeah, I mean, and it goes hand in hand with that whole philosophy of of what we're talking about here. That that impact. Um, it, that's it's just strange how, you know, something comes along and it just becomes the, like I said. It's just it's it's such a strong '80s icon, and uh, yeah, like you said earlier, the the fact of you know Canon getting their hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, it, and that and it not coming. Well, I mean, they you know they did do part three as well. So yeah, there you go. I mean, it can it can definitely get to that canon level, right? <laughs> well, the thing the, the thing about canon, and you know more about canon than I do, but the thing about canon, which is so crazy, is they they <laughs> like good movies, bad movies, and movies yeah. we won't even talk about. We'll do them all. Yeah, like like it's kind of like Golan Globus. It was just one of those like. I, I remember the, those credit roll-ups. It's like, it's a Golan Globus production. Yeah. I remember even being little, being like, this this is either going to be the best thing in the world or the worst thing that I've ever seen. That's canon. I mean, the Golan Globus is mm-hmm. is canon. So, uh, based, based on that little yeah. scroll, it's like, yep. <laughs> this is either going to be awesome or it's going to suck. That's exactly what <laughs> I said. I, I really <laughs> when we were covering... Uh, I think it was Army of Darkness, maybe Evil Dead too, on Hell Ming, and I brought up the fact that the movie is made or produced by Dilo De Laurentiis, and I said, when you see the name De, De Laurentiis, there's a 68 percent chance it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like, but the other six, the other because... percentage is like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, this is this is my kind of. Uh like snow blind or nose blind or how, however you want to call it. Like De Laurentiis, <laughs> Scott was like, we need to do a show on Dino De Laurentiis. I was like, okay. He's like, you know, his movies, right? I was like, I mean, I've seen his movie. I've seen his name on a shitload of movies. Yeah. So what are we talking about? He's like, good movie, good movie, good movie, bad movie, bad movie, bad movie, bad movie. Bad movie. I was like, it's the same guy? Yeah. <laughs> like, as, as far as I knew, it was like a complete, like, well, <laughs> it wasn't you, necessarily the same guy. But you got to remember, so, it's it's producing, though. So, I mean, you know. Well, well yeah, but It's kind of like the Golan and Globus thing, right? So, yeah, I mean, here's the guy that did the unthinkable and did the 1976 King Kong movie, which, flaws and all, it's still my favorite King Kong movie. I love it. Right. But... You know, Amityville 2, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can go down this list and go, you know what? Okay, he I got to give you Bill- credit on that one, you know. He he did Bill and Ted. Yeah. He did, like, Evil Dead and, yeah. like, like, so many different things. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. It's like, like you said, it's like canon or Golan Globus, just, like, yeah. different things where, like, okay, well, there's good movies in here. There's also bad. So sure. what are we talking about? He's like, all of them. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, the whole like, shebang. Like, like, yeah, you really need I, to see. Uh, you need to see the documentary called uh, "Electric Boogaloo," which is the go. This that's the canon story. Oh my gosh, man! I mean, <laughs> you see that that canon logo is is so iconic because I mean, look what you get. It, it, it's exactly what you said. It didn't matter. They were gonna pump way more money into a movie. If it deserved it or not, <laughs> that was that was the philosophy. So, Ninja Three, right? I mean, but you're talking about all your Van Damme stuff is is canon. Cobra mm-hmm. is canon. You know, uh, the last, uh, well, a lot of the, the the Rambo stuff. You've got, you know, uh, over the top <laughs> is a canon film. <laughs> over I mean, the top is a great movie. <laughs> that's the movie <laughs> that broke. That's the movie that broke the company. Well, that's fine. They like, paid Stallone probably. They paid Stallone so much money, over the top money, <laughs> to make that movie <laughs> that it actually they, they, broke the company. They they should not have done that, but yeah. over the top's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's <laughs> canon. That's canon in a nutshell. Because every one of them, you're, they're laughable. But you go, you know what? It's a pretty good movie, man. I mean, Electric Boogaloo. I mean, you get uh, Breaking One and Breaking Two. You know, which are the the break dancing movies? This is yeah. all. This is all under the canon umbrella, man. 
Rambo Superman part, part 4. Two. Superman 4 is a is a canon flick. <laughs> Rambo Rambo part 2 is a canon flick. Yeah. That's yeah. what we were talking about is the, it, it, it's Ram all your Chuck Norris stuff, that's all canon. Fire it, it, Firewalker. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's so much stuff that you can absolutely not take out of the 80s and make it still work. I don't think they would make Rambo now. Uh, well, and I think that's what he was trying to well, do because he was. I don't think you could start it. I don't think you could reboot it. I think that's what you're kind of saying. Right. Well, let, well, no. I mean, like if you had a similar story, like so let's just yeah. call it like 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 imagine Rambo didn't exist and imagine it's called like. Mo Ram, right? Like, well, are, it's about are, it's, we, it's about a guy who had a Afghanistan story, yeah. And like all of Rambo's accolades, like all of the same things. There's something romantic about Vietnam that is not romantic about the desert. Sure, like sure. that people kind of identify with, like ah, uh, because well, it's a time t- piece, t- you know. It is. Except we've been in the desert for a crap load Forever, longer yeah. than we've been in 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 the jungle. Well, to and me, to me, isn't Taken and John Wick and all these shows they're they're still derivatives of Rambo. Well, they are, but you're not going to take an original like the, the the heart of of Rambo, the heart of mm. First Blood is these guys. Got a raw deal. Yeah. These guys were sent over there to win a war, and they yeah. could have won it. Yeah. That's the whole That's the whole thing about Rambo. I could have won it right. if they would have just let me let win me it. Do, yeah, let me do my thing, yep. And they wouldn't let him do it, and so then they pull him back, and so then he's damaged by both the war yep. and his inability to execute. Right. And then and then dropped into the real world where everybody's like, "Well, we don't like you because yeah. you were you, <laughs> you were at war and you didn't win." And it's like, so 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 yeah. he he's getting it from both sides, yeah. in both fronts. Like yeah. the, the I mean, that's a killer thing to have to deal with. Yeah. Like like oh well, I could have won the war if they would have let me, but they didn't let me. Yeah. And then he comes home, and they're like, well, you should have won the war. He's like, well, I would have won the war if they would let me, but they didn't let me. Like, we shouldn't have even been there at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. No way to win. Yeah. <laughs> and... Big machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> and so you end up being, being scarred externally and internally, you know? Man, like you said, the... the... They, they like well what I said they would not make this movie now yeah that would be too subversive I think probably like, James Cameron wrote Rambo he was hmm. did you know did you remember that I, I don't James guess I Cam- huh. part two from a oh, screenplay okay. by Sylvester Stallone and James Cameron okay yeah. James Cameron's coming off of Terminator <laughs> yeah. and Stallone's coming off of Rocky right they Three. they I mean, this is before Oliver Stone got in there. Like, yeah, right, right. I'm. I still live in. I I live in Rambo world. Sure. Like, it's. It's just a much a part of our DNA of what we grew up with and that whole Americana thing. Uh, it's it's no different than the music that we like it, it's it's that stuff that we cut our teeth on and it's still that measuring stick right you know deep inside we still want to be john rambo we still want to be that guy that can handle the worst of situations we still want to be that guy that's passive that has the you know the lost puppy dog eyes and survive in in the in the world but we want to be able to immediately be the one that takes care of ourselves too it's the reason we were so fascinated with with the the ninjas and all that stuff it's the same scenario Mm -hmm. of i want to be the good guy who's nice and passive but when i have to 
I can throw down. That's the Bruce. It's the guy. it's the Bruce Lee story, right? Every mm-hmm. character he played in every movie was exactly that. It was uh, the Kenny Rogers song, right? Coward of the County. You know. Yeah, I just don't want to be left alone. D- just leave me alone. I don't want to start anything. But when you push that button, you 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 done messed up. And that's exactly what you know. So yeah, Rambo's a derivative of that. You know, you take the 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 character that Bruce Lee played in all those movies. Well, all those movies, all three of them, four <laughs> of them, and uh, give them the Vietnam background and base it off that book, and there's there's what you got. I think we're hitting the end of a show. I'm going to go put on some camo and pretend <laughs> I'm Rambo. <laughs> yeah, you do that at the... You do that at 11 o'clock at night and see if you don't get smacked. (laughs) (laughs) 